So let's examine the following example that deals with quantum tunneling. So the probability of a certain electron actually penetrating a potential barrier of 10 electron volts is given by 0.8%. So if the width of this potential barrier is 0.6 nanometers, we want to find the total energy of our electron. So to see exactly what's taking place, let's look at the following diagram. So in the diagram, the y-axis represents the energy given by E and the x-axis represents our position. So this is basically our potential barrier region. So it has a width given by L which is equal to 0.6 nanometers and the height of our barrier is given by u naught which is equal to 10 electron volts. So 10 electron volts can be converted into joules by multiplying 10 electron volts by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules. Uh, the electron volts will cancel and we're left with 1.6 times 10 to negative 18 joules. Now, what exactly is the meaning behind 0.8%? So if we take this fraction or if we take this percentage and divide it by 100, we get the fraction, we get the transmission fraction. So basically, if 1000 electrons hit this particular barrier, only 8 of those electrons will actually transmit and move to the other side of our barrier. That's exactly what this quantity means. So we basically want to use this to calculate our energy of the electron and we're going to calculate it using this equation. So the transmission coefficient t is equal to e to the power of negative 2 multiplied by alpha multiplied by l where l is the width of the barrier and alpha is given by this ratio. So basically we we want to first solve for alpha and then we want to plug in this quantity for alpha and then solve for E. So, notice that alpha is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by m, where m is the mass of that electron, multiplied by u naught minus e, where u naught is the height of our barrier, and e is what we're looking for. An h-bar is simply our constant. It's equal to 1.05 times 10 to negative 34 kilograms multiplied by meter squared divided by seconds. So, u Using all this information, let's begin with this equation and let's take the natural log of the left and the right side. So the natural log of the left side is simply natural log of t or ln of t. And if we take the natural log of our exponent e, that will disappear and we're left with negative 2 multiplied by alpha multiplied by l. So in the next step, we want to solve for our alpha. So if we solve for alpha, we see that alpha is equal to negative natural log of t divided by 2l. So now we take our alpha and we want to replace our alpha with this equation. So the square root of 2m multiplied by u naught minus e divided by h bar. So why exactly did we replace our alpha with this ratio? Well, that's because we want to find what that e is. So our next step is to rearrange our equation and solve for e. So let's rearrange this by bringing our h bar to the right side. We get the following result. And now, in order to get inside of the radical, we have to get rid of that radical so we can take the square of the left and the right side. And we get the following result. And finally, if we divide both sides by 2m and we rearrange for our e, we get the following result. So the energy of that electron is equal to u naught, the height of the potential barrier given in joules, minus the square of negative h bar ln t divided by 2l divided by 2m, where h bar is a constant, t is the transmission coefficient. To get the transmission coefficient, we take our percentage and divide that by 100l is the width of the barrier 
barrier Nm is the mass of our electron, 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms. So we plug in our quantities and we note that the L, the width, must be given in meters. So to convert from nanometers to meters, we take 0.6 and multiply it by 10 to negative 9. So we get on the inside negative 1.05 times 10 to negative 34 multiplied by natural log of 0.008. This is our transmission coefficient t. We divide that by 2 multiplied by the length and we take the square of that. And then we divide that by 2 multiplied by the mass given in kilograms. Now we take the u naught and we subtract this quantity from u naught and we get about 1.5 times 10 to negative 18 joules. Now if we want to, we can also convert this quantity into electron volts by dividing it by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules and we get about 9.4 electron volts is the energy of the electron as it travels along this horizontal axis.